Since getting into the hobby of video games, there have been many stories and characters that I've met along the way that have resonated with me on a personal level that many other mediums have not been able to do. The connection with these characters and stories have brought some happy moments, but also some sad moments as well. Whether I shed a few tears, full on sobbed, or was just in my feels, these games had an emotional impact on me that will stay with me forever. So today, I want to share with you the games that I've tugged on my heartstrings. Hello everyone, my name is Fedro and this is Cozy Fudgy and on this channel we cover a variety of things such as video essays, reviews, JRPGs, and all things cozy gaming. Video games can bring stories that are just as moving and powerful and impactful as movies and TV shows today. So today I wanted to share with you guys a few games that impacted me and moved me and made me feel all the feels with you guys. So first up, we have Fire Emblem Three Houses. The game takes place on the fantastical country of Foldland, which is split up between the Industrian Empire, the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, and the Leicester Alliance, three strong kingdoms. The Garrick Mock Monastery, a prominent office academy that instructs students in tactics and battle, is also located on the continent. Gamers assume control of former mercenary who joins a wider political war as professor. The enigmatic crests and their impact on the globe are at the center of the story. The main character must select one of the Academy's three houses, the Golden Deer, the Blue Lions, or the Black Eagles to mentor and guide. Every house is a representation of one of the three nations, and each house's students have different backgrounds and skill sets. Players discover long buried plots, shady political dealings, and historic mysteries that influence Folden's destiny as the narrative develops. Decisions made by the player have big influence on the plot and character interactions, both within and outside of combat. Now the reason why I think for me I resonated so much and felt so many feelings and honestly cried at times with Final Fire Emblem Three Houses is that I think it was the characters. What's really great about this game is that it has a huge cast of characters and each of them have a developed story or at least somewhat of a developed story and background that they have with them. And so a lot of these characters have had some pretty traumatic, traumatic backgrounds. Um, for me, some characters that stood out were definitely Dimitri and his upbringing, as well as Bernadetta with her relationship with her father, as well as Lysithia and her ridiculous childhood and how she was kind of not kind of she was literally stripped of her childhood and only now live has such short amount of time to live that might be a spoiler sorry as well as Edelgard and her why she became the most ruthful edgelord leader that she is today and then of course Dudu and him being kind of dealt with racism not kind of he was definitely dealt with racism and his his background and his lineage. So definitely what, what's really great about or what made Fire Emblem Three Houses so impactful were these characters. I just listed a few of them because honestly all and a lot of these characters have such meaningful stories that really really honestly mess with me in my heart and my emotions. It definitely put me through it. Next up we have Trails in the Sky the third. I could have honestly picked any Trails in the Sky game but Trails in the Sky the third for me definitely has stuck with me and definitely really, really wrecked me emotionally. Trails in the Sky the Third is the third installment in the Trails in the Sky arc. The game centers on Kevin Graham, a traveling priest of the Septine Church, and his quest to look into the enigmatic doors that have started to open up into different places. Kevin has to investigate these doors to find the hidden truths and face his own inner demons. They lead to many realms. Players will come across well-known characters from earliest games who are all facing unique difficulties and obstacles along the way. The story explores the past of the characters and puts some plots from previous titles to rest. Additionally, the game adds new gameplay features such as the capacity to assemble a party from a sizable character pool. Now of course I did a whole deep review of Trails in the Sky or Trails in the Sky the Third on my channel, you should definitely check it out and I go into more detail as to that, but that one definitely emotionally wrecked me. And I definitely had to like sit with myself and my thoughts for a little bit because it goes through a lot. Um, I think with Trials in the Sky the Third, it definitely fleshes out characters a lot more in that game. Um, I think of course stories that definitely stood out to me was Kevin and him literally fighting his inner demons and him being just kind of like, kind of a lone wolf trying to 
kind of pretty much carry all of his burden, like carry all of his burdens to himself rather than talk it out with other people. And that's something that I can relate to. I tend to kind of keep stuff to myself and try to hopefully figure it out myself. But I know that I do have loved ones that will care and listen and will help me through it. And that's definitely something that he had to struggle and work with throughout the game. And of course, another really traumatic one was Reen. I'm not going to go into two or Ren. Um, Ren and her story. I'm not going to go into too much detail about her and her story because it's pretty triggering. There's a lot of um, trigger warnings in her story, but I definitely, when after I finished experiencing that door in that game, I definitely was crying my eyes out because what a ch no child should ever go through anything that she went through. And it definitely was not expecting such hard and intense topics being discussed in that game and it definitely sits you and made the story even more impactful and made me just want to honestly just get her and hug her and say everything's gonna be all right I promise but yeah Trails in the Sky the Third or any Trails game will definitely put you in your feels. And next up we have my top game of 2022 with Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Following the occurrences in Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and Xenoblade Chronicles 2, in Xenoblade Chronicles 3 the nation of Kevis and Agnes are engaged in a never-ending war on the world of Ionius, which is made of of Bionis, the setting of Chron Xenoblade Chronicles 1, and Alrest, the setting of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. The events of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 takes place on the planet Anios, where Kevis and Agnes, two warring kingdoms, are fighting a never-ending war with troops that have 10 years to live. The narrative centers on Noah and his two Kevis-born childhood pals, Uni and Lands, as well as Mio and her two Agnes-born fellow warriors, Senna and Tyon. After gaining the Ouroboros strength, the resolve to cooperate in order to find safety is on their minds. They learn the truth about their world and the mysteries of their internal war on their quest. No, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, I think the whole premise of the whole, the story and narrative of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is just very dark and very gloomy and very sad overall. There's just a lot of sad undertones, not undertones, the whole story is just really sad. But I think for me, that re the one that really broke the camel's back was chapter 5. And if you know, you know. Because that chapter Oh my god, I clearly just remember I was playing this on my Switch on my couch with my dad over in the living room and I'm just literally just a sobbing mess over there and I'm just trying to like quietly like sob because I don't want to look like a mess. I'm like, what are you doing crying over there? I'm like, I'm just experiencing cinematic peak and beautiful writing, okay? But either way, chapter 5 really, really wrecked me. And if you go on YouTube, just type in Xenoblade Chronicles 3 chapter 5, you will just see a plethora of people just literally crying their hearts out because of how impactful that was. Because leading up to that point, you're really going on to this journey and rooting for these characters to fight for their free will. And when you get to chapter 5, it just seems like it's just it, that's it. But, and it really just really punches you there with all the feels. I don't want to go into too much detail and spoil too much. I definitely want you to experience it for yourself. But chapter five, when you get there, come back to this video and then you'll know. So another game that definitely emotionally resonated with me is Final Fantasy 16. The world of Final Fantasy 16 is called Valestia, and it's ruled by six nations that have access to enchanted crystals and dominance. People who can harness the power of the crystals are branded and sent to lives as slaves, while others serve as hosts for national emir. As the blight, a deadly disease, spreads over the continent, tensions between the countries worsen. In order to bring prosperity and peace to their own countries, each nation is competing with others for control of the Mother Crystals. In this game, we play as Clive Rosfield, who, after seeing, seeing his country destroyed and his brother killed, sets on a quest for revenge to track down the evil icon Ifrit. However, what begins as a straightforward tale of retribution gradually transforms into a tale about standing up for the right to choose to live the life you want to live on your own terms. Kind of similar to Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and Final Fantasy 16 definitely is a pretty sad and dark story. Very, very dark. There's not much breath or room or space for com comedy relief or kind of happy moments. Of course, there are definitely some comedy relief and happy moments in it, but it's kind of sparingly, not going to lie. So definitely go into that game knowing you're going in for a pretty dark and intense story. Um, I wasn't expecting to it be as dark as it was. I mean, it was, I knew it was going to be pretty intense, but not as intense as it was. But it definitely 
goes a lot because they're definitely huge themes of, of course, slavery, prejudice, and obviously, I don't know say race. I don't know if there's racism in this game per se, but there's definitely a lot of prejudice and of course, heavy, 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 heavy on the slavery. So keep that in mind. Um, I think what really stuck with me is that there's um, that really pushed and emphasize how dark and intense this game were. Certain two side quests in San Breck, where Clive kind of like really understands the harsh, harsh life of what it is to be a branded. And those really just like, it kind of just really solidified how intense and how dark this game was going to be, where those two title quests or side quests in San Breck. Also, I think Clive and Joshua's relationship was honestly really beautiful and just throughout the game you just wanted them to be together. And all I'm going to say is that ending, the ending was too much, I'm not going to lie. I've already mentioned how much that game wrecked me. I have a picture of how I ended up with a sobbing mess at the end of it. I will include it here. Again, I've mentioned it in my other channel, on my other videos, but here it is again just to show you how, or over here, how much it wrecked me um yeah that game was a lot it was a lot and again I was a sobbing mess once those credits were rolling was it worth it yes did I put myself through it absolutely will I do it again maybe but definitely be warned that this is definitely an emotional roller coaster of a game and lastly, a game that I wasn't expecting it to be as emotional was Yumawadi Lost in the Dark. A little girl wakes up in an unfamiliar pitch black woodland and is unable to recall how she got there. She was strolling up to the school rooftop at nightfall when she last remembered any anything. While mindering in the woodland, the young lady encounters an enigmatic figure. She recognizes the voice of the person speaking to her from the someplace in her past. A strong curse has been cast upon you. To break it, you must recall the crucial details you have overlooked. You have until the first light. Thus, the little girl sets out on the spooky streets of her town at night in search of her lost memories. Now, when I played this game, I was definitely looking forward to a very chill, cozy horror game to fit into the Halloween vibes. What I was not expecting to really feel absolutely destroyed by the end of it, and I wasn't expecting to have such intense themes. So definitely be warned, there's definitely um, a lot of trigger warnings into that game as well. But what was really, 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 really great about it is that it had a really interesting story, even though there was no really talking and of course there was dialogue but there wasn't the characters weren't expressing or talking but you still felt for these characters and you honestly wanted nothing but the best for them even from the very beginning of the game you're already in a really dark and gloomy and really hostile environment with the character being bullied and then at the end it kind of feels like things are on to a better page is all i'm gonna say but it definitely was an emotional roller coaster of feelings and yeah, it definitely was a wild one. Was not expecting that for sure. And with that, those are pretty much all of the games that I felt gave me all the feels, made me feel a lot, everything, everywhere all at once. <laughs> and I'm definitely glad that I played those games because I do like to give a good cry. I think having a good cry is therapeutic, even though at the time you're not feeling that great, but at the end of it, you just, you know, I was really happy to be able to experience the stories and I definitely think that you should also experience them as well. Also comment down below what are some games that definitely emotionally resonated with you and stuck with you today. If you guys enjoyed this video, do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!